Hello and welcome to another video from me, Roger D, Inside the Party. Anyway, we're going to talk about the Toshibas, because Toshiba sent these over. And I remember like doing some memory flash air review, and it's going to leave it in the link in the description down below so you can check that out. And it shows what camera I used and how I got the Wi-Fi app to work and how fast it was to travel from one device to another device and how good the encryption is. Now this is the newer version. And in this video, I'm not gonna be showing you how to obviously put the app on or anything like that. I'll leave it in the link in the description down below to do that, because I've already done it already, and it's the same procedure. What I'm gonna be here today to talk to you about is the read and write speeds, because it's all about the performance of how you can get data from one end to another through read and write speeds. So this is the Flash Air 64, uh, 64 Gigabyte version. I didn't even I couldn't remember what it was then. Um, so basically, this has got 90 megabytes per second reads and 70 megabytes per second writes. So we're going to be checking it out to see if we get close to that or over that. That would be good if it exceeds that speed. And through the other Toshiba SD cards, they serve me well. Bit rate and everything like that reads really nicely. Um, so I basically used the 4K version which was a little Osmo, and I used it with this. This is the 64 gigabyte version, and this is the Xeria M30E. And um, this card bit rate was really nice, it's clean, it works really well in slow motion, works really well in 4K. It just works, And but I haven't like, had it for very long. I've been using it for probably about a month to two months. It's pretty good, it's decent. This has got read speeds of 270 megabytes per second and also 260 megabytes per second write speed. And this is a 32 gigabyte card, so it's incre incredibly fast. This is their pro range. So anything in their pro range is normally black and um, gold. And then obviously next range down is white and red. And then flash card is just normal. But um, this is saying that it can work with up to 8K cameras. Now a 32 gigabyte, would not work with an 8K camera. I've got a 6K Inspire 2, and to be honest with you, it takes smaller memory cards than this, and it works with 4K, but it would get filled up really quickly. So you imagine 8K is like so much data that I would not think you'd be able to go with this card. But what I think Toshiba are trying to say is, is that it can handle 8K detail, which means that obviously 4K and 8K four times the detail of 4K. So you can imagine how big that is. On my 6K, I've got a terabyte um, SSD, and if I record in 6K RAW, it lasts about 10 minutes. So you can imagine, then that's a terabyte, so this is 32 gigabytes, but the detail is superb. But anyway, let's put it in through the Lexa machine um, and get it on the computer and see how fast read and write speeds are. We're using, what we're we using, Crystal Disk or Crystal Disk Mark. So first off, we go for the slower one. And this is the Wi-Fi one, we're gonna place it in here. We're gonna do a drag and drop test as well with some uh, files to see how it is in real life uh, performances. And then we'll use a benchmark as well, but we'll do the benchmarks first to see how we get on. So the Flash Air card, it says basically up to, so it says for 4K recording, up to 90 megabytes per second and 70 megabytes per second write speed. Now this card is still decent enough to like obviously use the 4K and stuff, it will play no problem. But we've only got up to, so 44.88 megabytes per second and write speed 41.52 megabytes per second. I was hoping for a lot more than that. But anyway, uh, let's move on. We're gonna try the 64 gigabyte Toshiba M30E3E. We'll put it in here. Now also, another factor could be, because I'm using real world results. You had Alexa or something that you connect through USB 3 bus, then that could slow you down depending on where you're gonna be connecting it in the ports in the computer and stuff. Some people might accidentally put it in USB, like you can put it in USB 3.1 or USB 3 or obviously USB 2 and then you will notice the difference in speeds and it might not be the card. But I've got it plugged in straight into USB 3 at the back. 
Right, so now I'm gonna get this uh, 64 gigabyte card going. It's uh, left me 58 gigabytes of space. And let's see how well that does. So we're looking, well, no, not, oh, do you know what? I don't even know how much we're looking at. I uh, need to go on the internet real quick. Uh, it's this one. Let's see what speeds are we looking at. Because I've seen to have lost the box. Well, so max speed, right, 65 megabytes per second. It doesn't even, oh yeah, max read speeds are 98 megabytes per second. So that's what we're hoping for. So let's see what happens. Ooh, 97.11 and probably a little bit more. So that's on the read spec, which is, I'm okay with. That's really close. Write speeds would be good if we can get to, the what is it, this 64, 63 megabytes per second? I'll be happy with that. So wow, 72.61 megabytes per second write speed. That is awesome. So um, I was expecting like 63 megabytes per second, 64, and we get 72.61, which is excellent. Read speed's 97.11, which was uh, 89 point, no, yeah, 89.1, was 80, yeah, something like 8.9, uh, whatever, in kilobytes, I don't know what that is, can't remember, because it all works out really funny. But technically, it's just under the maximum uh, like read uh, speed, but we go over the right speed, which I'm really quite happy about. Um, anyway, it can work in good temperatures as well, at 25 de minus 25 degrees to 85 degrees, which will be pretty dead if we worked in 85 degrees. But it just shows without condensation as well. I, I don't know. In England, it's always like humid and that, so it's low to do. Anyway, um, two year service, so you can speak to them and all that. Anyway, details, estimate recording times, 128 gigabytes, HD video, approximately 15 hours, 20 minutes, full HD video, approximately 12 hours, 20 minutes, 64 gigabyte, HD, what one have I got, 64? So I should be able to get seven hours, 40 minutes out of it, and six hours, 10 minutes out of 32 gigabytes. Mm, kind of difference. HD video, approximately three hours, 50 minutes. Four HD video, approximately three hours. Okay, not too bad. So this is a SD class, uh, it's a UHS speed class three, all the way to S, uh, SD speed class 10, which is what we're all used to. So now we're on to the 32 gigabyte pro version. So with this, this gives me 30 gigabytes. So two gigabytes are gone for obviously data and storage and backup and all that sort of stuff. So we should be looking at 260 megabytes maximum write speeds and 200, um, so no, hang on. Read speeds, 270 megabytes per second and write speeds are 260 megabytes per second. So I'm hoping that it uh, like exceeds that because this is their pro range card and for all of that, 25 degrees, minus 25 degrees and 85 degrees as well, that you can be able to use the temperatures for um, and this is also a video speed class of 90, uh, all the way to SD speed class 10. And this apparently can work with 4K and 8K, or definitely 4K. But anyway, let's check, see how it's doing. Um, <laughs> something's not right here. We're meant to be up to 270 megabytes per second read speeds. We're only hitting 44.88. But anyway, it's got data uh, recovery software available to download free for one year. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a retest and uh, see what the problem is. Because all the other cards have been fine, and I normally take it out and put it back in to reset it so all the cache is all done, and it's nice and clean, and it's ready to go. But um, that's really quite low. That's, like, more than low. Right, so we've gone through the first round and uh, not happy because it's seven times slower. So what I'm gonna do is restart it and see if that clear, clears the problem. Because for your benefit and your sake, like you pay good money, you expect it to actually work straight away. And if it's going that slow and you haven't even got a benchmarker tester, then how would you know that it's going really slow? If you plug it in and you're dragging and dropping, you're gonna be like, hmm. What's going on? It must be the computer. Restarting or resetting software. Let's try it again. Hello. 
there's something not right here. This card must be faulty because I have done, I've got this card, I've got it, where have I? I ain't even got it here. Or it might be in the camera, but I've got a card similar to this on Toshiba and it did, it actually check the videos out. I'll leave a link in the description down below and you can check it out. But um, I can't continue to do this video with this because it's not at the right speed and spec. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just cancel that, stop benchmarks, and we're gonna continue with uh, doing real world results, so dragging and dropping, see if there's anything different there. But anyway, uh, let's do real world results right now. So we'll start off with, what card? The Flash Air card, which is, seems to be the same speed as that one, which is really weird. And the Flash Air, wow, that's pretty quick. So literally I am getting 40, oh, I had 40.1 and it's around, let's drop down a little bit to 39. It's back up to 40. So between 39 and 40 megabytes per second um, write speeds at the moment. And then we're gonna obviously put it back onto the computer. I mean, get it from the computer onto the SD card. No, from the SD card to the computer. So at the moment, I am dragging and dropping to the SD card. So this is what the speed is at the moment. And uh, it's not bad. 45 seconds left for like three and a second gig. That is not bad whatsoever for this card. And we're done. So now I'm going to um, offload this uh, back onto the card. Is that right? So I've offloaded it onto the card and now I want to get it from the card onto the computer. So let's see how quick this will go. Right, so this is in the NVMe drive now. So what I'm gonna do is drag and drop from the SD card, see how quick it is. Oh, that's how quick it is, it's done. Okay. Uh, well, that was just pointless because I don't even know if you even saw that. I might have to slow that in slow motion. Whew. Right, so it shows that it's no slouch of dragging and dropping information to computer. So if you've got an NVMe and you've got this card, it's going to take literally two seconds and then you're at the door. Right, so that's that one. And then let's try the 64 gigabyte, which is the M33 or 03E. So we're getting 69.9 megabytes per second. Uh, write speeds, not too bad. It looks proper continuous. Went up a little bit. So it's maxing out at about 70.2 megabytes per second. Real world results, so that's really quite cool. It's not too long. Three, over three gigabytes, not too bad. All right, that's done. Um, so same three gigabyte file from the, uh, the SD card. So replace destination. And it's done already. So less than two seconds, definitely faster than the other card. Now for the faulty card, let's put that in there. Same procedure. Something wrong with it, definitely. 100% something's wrong with it. It's like, it's meant to be this card, but this card's even a little bit faster and it's got like the black covering. So yeah, it's taking one minute, 15 seconds and a stable rate of 40 megabytes a second write speed. So I don't know. Right, there we go. Checks three gigabytes, right, cool. Drag that, replace, bang, really quick, get NVMe, that's what I'm going to say. So my conclusion is, uh, if you're going to go and buy it from eBay or something like that, check, get a read and write speed, um, I don't know what this thing's called, crystal uh, disk mark thing, and it basically benchmarks your SD cards and your SSDs, so you can find out if you've got the real deal, because technically it could have the nice shell, the nice stickers, and you can think that you've got a really nice specced out SD card, and it's gonna be all right with 4K and stuff like that, and then all of a sudden you're having problems, but you don't know what it is, so always get like a little benchmark tester, and then test it yourself at home. It doesn't take too long to test it, and once you've done it, then you least you're at peace of mind. Uh, and it just shows that I've got this all 
fourth in Toshiba, and uh, this one seems faulty, and that's another thing, you can check for errors and faults, and uh, yeah, that's, that's what we can do. Anyway, real world results were tested, and also benchmarking was tested, and there you have it. It's not the software of the computer, it's just that, because everything else works. But anyway, subscribe, share, like, follow me on all social media platforms, and also leave comments and check out the community tab. I'm always on there. You seem to be liking asking those questions, so I'll keep them banging. And then um, I'll obviously make those community questions and turn them into videos. If you want to see that, leave it in the comments down below. And I'll see you next one. Thanks for watching. Roger and out.